Hi, my name is John Farrell and we're here from Lionel headquarters in Concord, North Carolina. This is the first of 10 collector spotlight interviews that we'll be doing this year. Um, we'll be doing one every month during the 2016 season. And our first guest is Lionel President Howard Hitchcock. To start off, Howard, you used to be known by an another, another name, Dr. Diecast. Yes. How did you adopt that nickname? <laughs> uh, it was sort of assigned to me, actually. I, um, gosh, back in a couple of years ago, we used to do a morning radio show on Sirius Radio, uh, NASCAR. That was prior to the merger, XM and, uh, and NASCAR, so it was Sirius 128. And um, for two hours, we would uh, talk to collectors. We, uh, we had a panel. So um, Tim Trout was our expert. He was from Beckett's. He was in Texas, and he would, he would come on and talk about values. And uh, we had uh, Buzz McKim from the Hall of Fame, um, and he's the historian there. And he would talk about the value of, of items from a collectible nature and the history and the importance of the sport. And I would talk about how these things are made and how things are put together. And so because I sort of became the resident expert on diecast. Um, it was assigned to me sort of in the channels at the time, the management group that was here, um, and it sort of stuck. So we, we made a, we made a uh, sort of cartoon caricature of it, and uh, I was Dr. Diecast. Do you still answer to that name? <laughs> uh, only for people I like. <laughs> <laughs> Good deal. Well, in 2014, you were named president of Lionel, but you were with a company prior to that. Um, can you give us a little um, idea of what your history um, is with the company? Sure. Um, actually, it all started back in 2006. I moved from Jacksonville, Florida to here in Concord, North Carolina to actually this building um, and worked for a company called Motorsports Authentics. Motorsports Authentics was the merged company uh, that was created by the, uh, the joint venture between ISC, which is International Speedway Corporation, and Speedway Motorsports, SMI. Um, and what that did is it acquired Action Performance Companies, which was the larger of two merchandise companies. They operated most of the haulers, made most of the die cast and apparel. And Team Caliber, which was actually a Roush-based company, and they did Roush products, and um, they had some Penske licenses. And uh, the, the France family and the Smith family wanted to own the race experience from start to finish. They wanted to own what was on track, they wanted to own the track experience for the fans, and they wanted to own the merchandise. And so it was believed by uh, Lisa France Kennedy and, and uh, Marcus Smith at the time um, that, di that this would complete, the merchandise story would complete the, the uh, entire piece of the fan experience. And so they formed Motorsports Authentics. Um, I came up to be the vice president of uh, diecast and collectibles here. Um, and my experience was developing collectible type products, uh, direct to consumer collectible type products, a lot of product development, license stuff. Um, and so as things evolved and changed within the sport, within the economy, quite frankly, um, it essentially evolved into a position where I became general manager over the diecast business um, and the collectibles business and was running all of the trinkets and the novelties as well as the diecast. And then uh, starting in 2009 into 2010, um, Lionel came to the party as the uh, NASCAR, uh, NASCAR Team Licensing Trust, or the NTP, was formed um, and became a sort of licensed partner with NASCAR to take on the diecast um, as Motorsports Authentics was moved to more of just a trackside experience. Anybody who's familiar with the industry knows Motorsports Authentics is now um, since uh, gone and uh, has been replaced by Fanatics, who does a great job with a uh, merchandise tent at the tracks. We're gonna see that now uh, this year for the first time at all tracks. Um, and they're a, they're a partner of ours, and we, uh, we believe in the model that they're going with. Um, and we're super excited about supporting that. But um, at that time, I became general manager. This is a really long story. Um, <laughs> I became general manager over Lionel and the operational side of Lionel, and the marketing um, and sales initiatives were still out of New York City. Um, and then in 2000, uh, 2014, as we talked about, um, I became president over the whole thing. So um, since then, we've consolidated uh, offices with Lionel. We had, uh, obviously, our, our operations here. We had New York. We had Ohio. We had Michigan. We had California. And essentially, everybody is now consolidated here in North Carolina, uh, with the exception of a few remote individuals and a small a tech operation in California. Very cool. So what, um, what would you say during your tenure has been your favorite diecast? Or is there a one that pops, up and pops into mind? 
you know, they all have stories and, and I'm really passionate about product. Marketing and product was my background. And so every year I kind of have a new favorite because it's, it's bringing some story to life, something that's really cool. I mean, the Batman, Superman stuff, being able to work on that before anybody knew about it, it's a lot of fun. The Wrangler number three, the blue and yellow Wrangler number three, which Junior, Junior drove, which was the first time the new uh, Camaro had been on the track. Um, we, we knew about that program long before and were involved in actually the development and pulled it together and, and had product essentially in market as it hit. Um, then there's the classic ones. I mean, you know, the Dale Earnhardt crash car is one of the coolest pieces of diecast I think that's ever been made. Um, I have a prototype of that. That's probably one of my cherished favorites. But honestly, talking about development of programs and ideas, I have in front of me what I think was one of the coolest, which is um, this is the Steven Siller Tunnel to Tower uh, 10th anniversary car. And this car actually ran on track with the 34 um, in Richmond on the 10th anniversary of September 11th. Uh, and it commemorated the, the tragedies of that day in remembrance of uh, really, really the experience that America went through. And um, this design talks a lot about different things. We've got the Pentagon on the front of the, uh, the nose fascia. Um, down the side, you can see the flag with the trade towers in the, in the, near the B post. Um, and then in the back, ghosted in the clouds, you have 93 to reflect flight 93. Um, so what we did is we created this in-house and we put this together to really try to tell the story um, around this really horrible day in American history, but a, a time when so many people came together. And we pulled it together with an on-track program that was complemented by a number of other, other cars. Um, and we raised a lot of money uh, and, and I think continued awareness for something that we don't want to forget. So um, that's my personal favorite because it has a lot of personal meanings behind it. Um, I grew up in the New York, New Jersey area, so uh, an area that was highly affected. Um, and, you know, had a lot of friends. Luckily, I didn't lose anyone that I knew personally, but I had a lot of friends that were affected. So um, that was a great program because it, it, out, of, out of something so horrible came something so good. And so um, that piece actually in several iterations is, 